I'm John Bennett, Face-to-Face -face Program Director here at Kids Escaping Drugs. Today we're going to talk about managing stress, anxiety, depression, and other feelings. This is an especially important topic in the times we're experiencing right now with so much uncertainty. We're going to look at how people sometimes process these emotions in negative fashions and what that looks like, but we're also going to look at some positive ways to process these emotions as well, and we're actually going to get some help from that with some of my colleagues on the Renaissance campus. Hi, I'm Tim Smith. I'm the Recreation Coordinator here on the Renaissance Campus. Uh, as part of our recreation program, we try to focus on uh, providing our patients here uh, with better ways of coping with stress, uh, helping them to relax, helping them to build self-confidence. We work on team building. Um, I've seen firsthand uh, the role that we can play in helping reduce stress, relieving anxiety and those pressures in life, especially nowadays when everybody's cooped up, is to learn to be active and to get themselves involved in whatever activity it may be. You may be looking at uh, working on the weight room, uh, going on a treadmill, going for a run. It could be simple things that we do as even taking on a hike, going to a park. Uh, getting outside, playing a catch with a football, shooting baskets, looking at yoga, simple things, even crafts, painting we incorporate into our program will help our patients reduce their stress, their anxiety, and feel better about themselves. So take it from me, from experience, anything that works, any little thing, think outside the box, help yourselves, help your kids, help your patients, and have a better way of life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne D'Amico, and I am the Director of Development here on the Kids Escaping Drugs Renaissance Campus. But I also have a degree in music, and I teach uh, music lessons, uh, singing and piano lessons, outside of my regular job. And, I, and what I see with the kids that I teach is that music really helps them manage their stress and anxiety with school. Uh, music can lift your mood. When you're listening to a happy song, you feel happy. It's a great way for kids to express their emotions. I see with our kids on campus, um, they all are able to have MP3 players where they can upload their favorite songs. Um, it helps them with uh, meditation and reducing their stress. They're allowed to bring musical instruments with them if that's something that they enjoy. And overall, the benefits of music on our children on the campus, the children that I teach, and pretty much all of us is beneficial when reducing our stress and anxiety. Hi, I'm Brittany Annis. I'm one of the mental health therapists here at Renaissance House. One thing that is so important when talking about feelings is that it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to talk about those feelings. I know sometimes there is that stigma of conceal, don't feel, but if Elsa can get through those feelings, so can you. One of my roles here as a therapist is talking with people about their feelings, normalizing how they're feeling and how they can express their feelings in an everyday setting. So even if you're at a school or you know, you're with your family or with people that, you're, that you love, like your friends, all of that stuff, or even your pet, it's totally okay to talk about feelings. And those are one of my jobs here. I use several things. I use mindfulness to help being present in the moment. And I even teach deep breathing by even using bubbles. So talking about feelings and normalizing those feelings and using just simple activities like taking a deep breath can help us be, use our bodies and our mind to the best of their abilities. Hi, I'm Kristen. I'm one of the addictions counselors here on Stepping Stones at Renaissance Campus. One of the coping skills that I teach to the kids that are living here is expressive journaling and writing. Um, it is a great way to write down feelings, thoughts, memories. Um, it is things that sometimes you don't want to share with others, but it's a great way to get, to get your expressions out on, into written form. There is no wrong way to do it. You start slowly, you um, can begin at any time. It is something that you can do um, whether you're in this type of a setting or whether you're at home alone. Um, I write on a daily basis. Um, it is, I can see the positive impact that it has on the kids here as a coping skill for them to just go back, reread where they've been and where they're going. Um, there is, 
There is many, many prompts that you can find online. Um, you can work through stressors in life in a very healthy way. Um, I think it's, it's a, expressive journaling is a wonderful thing to do to cope with life nowadays. Uh, and there is no wrong way or right, just right. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm the art therapy intern here on the Renaissance campus. I have been able to see firsthand how much art therapy can help our kids here. Art provides a great coping skill. Um, it reduces anxiety, stress. It gives kids an opportunity to express things that they feel like they can't express verbally or that they just don't have the words for. Uh, recently, we've been working on a Day of the Dead project. So we've been making altars um, either for people that we've lost or also for more abstract concepts like if people feel like they've lost a part of themselves or their innocence we're just sort of making memorial boxes so that's what we've been working on um, with the so at home you can also use art as a coping skill for stress so painting drawing just doodling or sketching you might have an old book that you can repurpose and make into an altered book or just doing some prompts, some journaling prompts. It's a great way to relieve stress and anxiety. Oftentimes, it's easy for adolescents especially to gravitate towards a negative way to cope with these emotions. That may be unhealthy eating habits, it could be outbursts of violence, it could be self-harm, or it could be the use of illegal substances such as drugs and alcohol. Now, Nobody ever thinks that they're going to turn into a drug addict. However, oftentimes we see the use of drugs and alcohol as a coping mechanism quickly spiral in to a full-blown addiction. So knowing the proper way to cope with stress and emotions is a really good way to keep yourself safe, both mentally and physically. Some of the drugs I definitely want to touch base with on today are prescription painkillers. We see so much prescription painkiller use in our area, and a lot of people don't understand that prescription painkillers are chemically the same thing as heroin. They're opiates, they're chemically the same deal. However, heroin is, is much stronger and cheaper than prescription painkillers. When somebody struggles with a prescription addiction, that tolerance goes up rapidly, and as their tolerance goes up, so does the amount of money they're spending on it. This can quickly spiral in to a heroin addiction. Another drug I want to touch on too is Xanax. Xanax is a very popular up and coming drug with adolescents right now. It's prescribed for anxiety, but it's referred to as a teleportation drug by many adolescents, meaning they take it, they black out, and they wake up miles and miles away, no idea how they got to that location, you know, oftentimes behind the wheel of a vehicle. We've had many adolescents on our campus who have been assaulted uh, physically, sexually, uh, under influence of, of Xanax. It's an extremely scary drug. The withdrawals of Xanax can actually kill someone. It puts them at risk of a grand mal seizure and potentially death too. It's only only two types of drugs where the withdrawals can kill somebody. The use of substances such as these or any substance, whether it's marijuana, alcohol, cocaine, anything like that. It's not an appropriate way to deal with stress and anxiety. I hope you enjoyed this segment and I hope that it also provided you with some necessary tools to deal with stress and anxiety, whether for yourself or a loved one in your life. Kids Escaping Drugs and myself would also like to thank Focus for including us in this powerful event. We are proud to be part of Focus and, and look forward to partnering with them on future events as well. As always, if kids can, escaping drugs can be helpful to anybody, give us a call, 716-827-9462. Thank you very much. As always, if you or someone you love is in need of help, do not hesitate to reach out to Kids Escaping Drugs at 716-827-9462 or visit our website at www.ked.org.